for me and for it's like I grew up with getting into the gang mean you had to get your ass jumped in and put in work. That's how you got into the game. It wasn't about buying your way in or yeah. let me go over here and buy a couple of some chains and watches and shit and take them on tour and we start hanging out and now and I'm from the neighborhood. It wasn't that that, that wasn't a, that wasn't the code. You, you talking about the '80s? Man, I'm just yeah. bef shit. You they didn't do that in right. the '80s. Yeah, the '80s was it's a whole other decade, no. and we ain't never seen a decade like the mm-hmm. '80s. <laughs> now I wanted to say mention all the '80s rappers never mentioned a gang name on Wax. No, I don't think it was. I think DJ Quick is the first one. That's '91 when he came out with uh, his first album, and he said right. something like "Tree Top," right. or "Swinging from the Trees," but right. NWA, Ice T, CM, Combs the Most Wanted. No one said gang names in the '80s, and I don't know if DJ Quick changed the game in '91. And other, and I think Death Row started to say a couple of uh, gang Why stuff. Why you on pointing at me when you said <laughs> that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, am I right? I mean, I mean, if you wanna, I mean, well, not true because everybody around here knows about the banging on wax records and, right and, yeah and, and, right. and a lot yeah, of them cats, a lot of them cats was claiming they neighborhood yeah, on there so that's my first rendition of niggas claiming sets on records because they were out just this my hood okay so let's let's change it they, they were that's independent album. independent shit so you was signed to major labels right so no major label rapper until no. quick set a gang name on wax right and i think that changed the game I don't think it changed the game. I just think it was, you know, something quick wanted to do. I mean, I mean, as far as if you look at after that, I don't think as far as we was concerned, we still was on the same pattern. We still didn't start speaking about trag new and I mean, maybe after some dudes might have started saying what street they was from or grew up on or stuff like that. But but you know, that really just like I'm from Treetop or Trag New or I'm from the motherfucking this block or that block. I think that started like down the line some. You know what I'm saying? After after quick and after a lot of dudes. Didn't you know what Snoop I'm saying? didn't Snoop mention Snoop was started yeah. mentioning twenty first street, yeah. but if you notice, Snoop didn't do a lot of that too in the beginning. But then, you know, like some dudes just it just it just started to transition. Fuck it. Oh, did I hear him? Oh, he said he was from so and so. Well, fuck it. Now I'm from a fucking 21st Street, or then next thing you know, my nigga Game came along, and it was Cedar Block, and then next thing you know, you know YG, and it was Tree Top, and it was 400 Block, and then everybody's, you know, fuck it. I'm gonna represent my neighborhood. Fuck it. And I think Pop was shouting out the mob. Yeah, James. Man, you 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't that one. No, I'm just saying. I think the '90s kind of we we saw it kind of slowly. Evolve. It started slowly evolving. Yeah, because motherfuckers want to let you know. Fuck it, you know. If it's like that shit, I'm, I'm gonna start letting people know where I'm from. Fuck it. Right. And 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 that was the crazy part. Like when you and uh, Quick Little Beef. Right. Man, you never crossed paths. Mm-hmm. And and you had mm-hmm. pretty much a little bit of everybody taking sides. Right. Now, this is me from this day, from back then and now. That was a beef you had, Bloods and Crips going at it when y'all was at, had yeah. this beef. Yeah. And then, you know, you got a lot of niggas got fucked up. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now y'all good. Oh, no, we good as a motherfucker. Exactly. I mean, I mean, with the truce and all of this stuff, the kitchens in the East Coast got, and, you know, everybody trying to, to make – and have peace, but they can't get over the hump. Right. Oh, they, they they killed the homie, or they did this. You got a guy right here that's making money, DJ Quick, you know what I'm saying, making money. They got this feud. They feud involved everybody. That it did. It, it, I mean, everybody. But then at the end of the day, just say I lost my cousin behind this feud, but these dudes are right here today, and they cool. They cool as hell. So it don't make no sense to even create this, this, this. Look at Tupac and Biggie, you know that beef was half ass. It was just full of shit. But look what it cost. And then at the end of the day, they were hooking up and getting back together, but it, it didn't happen. But then here you got other people talking and 
and like it, like nothing ever happened. You know what I'm saying? And I, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to say it ain't worth it. The, the beefs ain't worth it. No, nah, definitely. Yeah. At the end of the day, especially if if it come down to niggas losing their lives and yeah. shit over, you know, I, I, I credit it to just being young and immature right. and basically wanting to, again, wanting to represent where you from. I mean, you know, uh, uh, us, I mean, me as a young rapper and shit, even out, you know, in the streets going on tour, I still wanted to hang with the homies and be associated to the neighborhood. Even though we was making money, I'm saying, in movie screens and shit, our, our identity was still Compton in the neighborhood, and we didn't want to forget that. But then, like you said, beefs come over territories and rivalries and right. shit like that, and then it spread to records, and then innocent bystanders or niggas who ain't even got shit to do with the rap I spit or the rap he wrote, now niggas is losing their lives or getting fucked up behind it. So I think you, you know, and then you got some niggas who instigate the shit. You know what I'm saying? And then he got homies and I got homies who feel like we got to represent. And even when motherfuckers ain't around, that's how the beef still goes on. Because now you got people on the outside to feel like, fuck it, we got to partake too. Right. So it comes with just trying to over time and just being mature enough to grow the fuck up, really. Right. And, right. you know, some of us, when we get into that age bracket to where we start, you know, getting a little gray hair and kids running around and, you know, we still able to sit around here and be like, God damn, I'm getting old and got a teenage daughter or a daughter who got a kid now or blah, blah, blah. I guess we start getting them a little mature to where a nigga don't want to have no motherfucking beef. Exactly. As a grown man, I want to be able to go where the fuck I want to go and go hang with whoever and whatever neighborhood without it having to result into the situation of, you know, shit, I used to be a crip and you used to be a blood and niggas used to shoot at me and we used to shoot back and somebody lost their life. I get it, but that's like warfare to me, casualties yeah. of war. You exactly. get me? No, don't, yeah. fault, don't fault me for what I did when I was following the motherfucking street code and the yeah. rag and whatever, because now I'm a mature man and I know it ain't about that shit. So, you know, casualties of war, my nigga. You feel me? Pinocchio, we gon' tell you the truth and nothing but the truth. Oh. Extra chronic, this is not your average show. Like this.